Today's snap ortho sketch is going to be covering distal radius fractures. The sketch takes place on the ski mountains. These will illustrate the distal radius parameters and what is normal and abnormal. This will help determine what's acceptable and unacceptable when treating these injuries. So just think of someone skiing down the slopes and you'll remember this sketch. On the top left we have the polar tilt which will symbolize the volar tilt of the distal radius. On the bottom left we have the radial lookout. This is going to symbolize the normal radial inclination. And the peak height is going to help us remember the normal radial height. The polar tilt on the top left is our easy run of the day. It's only 11 degrees and that should help you remember the normal volar tilt of the distal radius. In our radial lookout we have a 23 degree symbol on there to help us remember 23 degrees is the normal radial inclination. The peak height of this mountain today is 1300 meters and that will help us remember 13 millimeters as normal for radial height. Now let's look into acceptable criteria when treating these injuries with close reduction and immobilization. So we have our two skiers here, our dorsal dolphin and yin yang man. The dolphin character symbolizes a recurring theme for dorsal. The five should help us recall less than five degrees of dorsal angulation. Our yin yang is a recurrent theme for the contralateral side, so as long as the dorsal angulation is within 20 degrees of the contralateral side, that is acceptable. The XX Roman numerals on the yin yang man's beanie should help us remember the 20 degrees. Our other skier here is wearing a recurring theme for radius, a radiating sun sweater. The number 5 on his beanie should help us remember less than 5 degree change in radial inclination is acceptable. And finally the base camp today is 500 meters up and that will help us recall less than 5 millimeters of radial shortening. The two people stepping off the chairlift will help us remember less than 2 millimeters of articular step off is acceptable. Our friendly ski patrol with this thumbs up will help us remember the treatment for distal radius fractures within the acceptable criteria. He's holding a notepad. This is a recurring theme for non-operative intervention. This means that these patients can be treated with close reduction and splint acutely with transition to a cast as an outpatient. The ski lift worker on the bottom right is holding a cracked gauge. This is our theme for not meeting acceptable criteria and he's holding a mallet so these patients will need operative intervention. Our toolbox symbolizes ORIF, and we put a lock on the front of the toolbox to help us remember the importance of anatomic volar locking plates, which can be used to treat this injury. And here we have our grandmother celebrating her 65th birthday, holding a notepad, our recurring theme for non-operative intervention, as patients in this age group can generally be treated conservatively with no major difference in functional outcomes. She's sitting next to the cast cart to help us remember these patients can be treated with close reduction and immobilization. So that's all we have for today's video. Whenever you're hitting those slopes, hope you remember your distal radius fracture parameters and treatment options.